Hello, I'm Richard Chambers, President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors. In a previous video blog, I shared my thoughts on five important things that internal auditors might not be hearing from management. Today I'd like to share a little bit about what internal auditors might not be hearing from their audit committee. Most audit executives work hard to develop an open relationship with their audit committee, and the effort generally pays off. However, some audit committee members may not be comfortable telling internal auditors everything that's on their minds. Sometimes they simply may not know enough about internal audit to know what we're capable of, and sometimes they're simply trying to spare our feelings. But often, it's the things they don't or won't say that we most need to hear. Let's face it, most people will never be invited to join a board of directors unless they have good people skills. They try to be tactful and most of the time that's good. But in this case, their absence of candor with internal audit can limit our ability to improve our departments. Over the years, I have worked with quite a few audit committee members in an advisory capacity. Here are a few things that they frequently said to me but didn't always say to their own internal auditors. The first, you're not as important to us as the external auditors. Ouch. I know that's a tough one to hear, and I realize that many of you might disagree with that statement. You know you add extraordinary value to your organization, and you can provide a lengthy list of internal audit accomplishments that would rival the impact of external auditors. Yet look at the typical audit committee charter. The description of the audit committee's responsibilities for the external auditors often dwarfs that for the internal auditor. The New York Stock Exchange's model, Audit Committee Charter, for example, includes seven paragraphs discussing the oversight of the external auditors, but only two paragraphs dealing with the oversight of the internal audit function. Many audit committees are populated with retired partners of public accounting firms, and their emphasis is often on what they know, external audit. But internal audit should be every bit as important, so it's up to each of us to recognize this and work tirelessly to change misperceptions of our importance with the audit committee. The second thing you may not hear from them is you send us too much information. Unfortunately, this is not always a misconception. I've seen well-intentioned chief audit executives send as many as 40 internal audit reports a year to their overwhelmed audit committee. Beyond that, I've seen internal audit reports running more than 200 pages distributed unabridged to audit committee members. Is it any wonder that audit committees think we send them too much information. When we overwhelm them, audit committees struggle to focus on the really important issues. They may not want to admit that they can't keep up, but the reality is many have multiple responsibilities and a limited amount of time. We should consider synthesizing results and identifying the really critical issues. We also should consider asking how they feel about the amount of information and the level of detail we're providing. Sometimes their answers could be surprising to us. The third thing you may not hear from them is, we wish you would connect the dots. So you're communicating all of the essential information about risk and controls to the audit committee. You may even provide a synopsis of reports or results and are careful not to overburden members with information. Despite your efforts, however, they still might not know what to make of the body of your work. Is the company or its individual business units well controlled? Are risks well managed? It's easy to miss the forest for the trees. Sometimes we are so busy communicating the details that we neglect to focus on the essential so what. I know that it makes for more work for internal auditors and that sometimes the judgment calls might not be easy. But offering our overall assessment on the effectiveness of risk management or internal controls based on our body of work can be valuable for the audit committee. They may not say it, but they really want you to connect the dots more often than you do. If you're not frequently using language such as, why is this important, or the consequences of this might or will be, then you're not synthesizing the information to what is truly useful to the audit committee. The fourth thing you may not hear from an audit committee is, we want you to focus on more than just financial controls, but we're not sure if you have the skills. Internal auditors, believe that we can address the full portfolio of risks facing our organizations, and none of us wants to believe that the audit committee doubts our abilities. Yet recent feedback from audit committee members in global surveys indicates that we may have a problem. 
Specifically, a recent survey from KPMG's Audit Committee Institute found that 82% of Audit Committee members believe that internal audit's roles and responsibilities should extend beyond the adequacy of financial reporting and controls to include other major risks and challenges facing the company. That's good news. Unfortunately, only half of these Audit Committee members believe that internal audit currently has the skills and resources to be effective in this role that's envisioned. Based on those findings, it's clear we need to redouble our efforts as a profession to acquire and retain the skills necessary to address a broad portfolio of risks. More importantly, it is critical that we demonstrate our ability so that audit committee members are confident that we have the skills and resources to be effective. The fifth thing you may not hear from the audit committee is, when you're a mouthpiece for management, we tune you out. Audit committee members are on hold an astute group. They have a pretty good idea of when we're being genuine and when we're just giving them the party line or talking points. It might seem like a good idea to constantly show a united front with management, but we need to remember that one of the primary strengths of internal audit is that we're organizationally independent. I'm not saying we should go out of our way to contradict management, but when we talk to the audit committee, we need to concentrate more on representing the results of our internal audit work and less on representing management's point of view. From my experience, management's always capable of speaking for itself. And we best add value when we're transparent and candid about the results of our work. Obviously, every audit committee member is different. And perhaps none of your audit committee members shares any of the views I've outlined. But it's important to know what's on their minds. To view my blog on this subject, go to chambersontheprofession.org. I'm Richard Chambers, President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors.